Welcome to Hebrew Readers Church. We hope everybody's enjoying this Shabbat so far. Uh, we have a great lesson today. I'm your brother Zach Wild. This is your brother Kasafo, and we're Hebrew Readers Church. Thank you for joining us today. And we have our lesson for today, Sabbath Delight. We're going to go into further edification on the Sabbath day. Um, Alahim revealed unto us some great edification, and we wanted to share it with everybody so that everybody could grow in the knowledge of Alahim. Uh, brother Kasafo, you got anything before we get started? I forgot it if I did, so. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's go. All right. Yours, brother? So, in understanding how to make the Sabbath a delight, we have to look at some of the issues that was going on in the house of Israel to help us pay in these times. The issue Israel was having in the past was that we were seeking to approach Ahaya by hearing his words, seeking his ordinances and such. But our works were according to our own ways and our own pleasures. And that meant we were sinning against his ways and the things that please him. In Isaiah chapter 58, he speaks on this issue and then he explains what he actually has pleasure in. So we would understand how to do his pleasure instead of our own ways. Just wanted to give an overview of Isaiah 58 to help with following along. Let's jump into Isaiah chapter 58, go verse 1 to 14, please. Isaiah chapter 58, verse 1. Cry aloud, spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgression, and the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily, and delight to know my ways, as a nation that did righteousness, and forsook not the ordinance, of their Elohim. They ask of me the ordinances of justice. They take delight in approaching to Elohim. Wherefore have we fasted, say they, and thou seest not? Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? Hold on. Imagine we're delighting to know his ways, we're asking him about his ordinances, and even fasting. But he's says he's showing us our sins why isn't he taking pleasure in our works continue behold in the day of your fast you find pleasure and exact all your labors when we fasted we will still find pleasure in our lust and exact our labors on unrighteousness instead of righteousness which is supposed to be the main purpose for fasting he testified what he meant by finding pleasure and exact now labors when, as he continues. Continue, please. Behold, ye fast for strife and debate. That's the lust of the flesh we found pleasure in. Now, what do we exact our labors to do? And to smite with the fist of wickedness. Our labors were in wickedness. While fasting from food, instead of fasting from wickedness and sinning to work righteousness. Continue, please. All right, so we we put this in layman's terms. <laughs> so oh. the problem the problem with our ancestors was that yeah they would be physically fasting they would still be doing works of sin while they were fasting physically. So that's exactly what was going on. Uh, All right. See, yeah. You shall not fast as you do this day to make your voice to be heard on high. We fasted for vainglory's attention that came with it when folks would see us, not out of a pure heart, in secret that Elohim may see it, like Yache said in Matthew chapter 6. We were hypocrites. Continue, please. Is this such a fast that I have chosen? A day for a man to afflict his own soul? Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? What thou call this a fast, and an acceptable day to a higher. You see how we made a spectacle of all of ourselves for attention? Now, how are we truly supposed to fast unto Allah? Continue, please, in verse 6. Is not this the fast I have chosen, to loose the bands of wickedness? To stop sinning. To undo the heavy burdens. Put away the burden of pride by confessing our faults and put on the light burden of meekness and being lowly of heart to learn to do good. And to let the oppressed go free. 
forgive our debtors so that they can go free. And that ye break every yoke. Break every stronghold of those evil spirits that are attached to us by working righteousness in the fruits of the spirit with the easy yoke of meekness. You sure you don't want to touch back on and to let the oppressed go free? I would love to touch back on it. In letting the oppressed go free, why it means forgive our debtors because there are burdens upon people for the sins committed. And when we forgive them, then that burden that is oppressing them is off of them. That guilt that was weighing them down is off of them so that they can go free and go forward onto the calling or go forward onto work and righteousness, not being plagued in heart by the guilt of feeling bad for what they had done, knowing that they've been forgiven. And that's also the way to toll on the person as well. The person who is still holding the oppressed is weighing the toll on you too. Because you're not forgiving your neighbor. Right, so I thought that was important not to just let slide by. Hey, good call. Uh, Isaiah 58 and 7. Um, is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry, and that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house? When thou seest the naked, that thou cover him, and that thou hide not thyself from thy own flesh. These are the good fruits of brotherly kindness, mercy, and the law of loving thy neighbor as thyself. If we do these things, what will happen? Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thine health shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee. And the glory of Ahia shall be thy reward. As Zachwa mentioned about how forgiving a person actually has an effect on us as well. If we don't forgive them, it can affect us negatively. Also, we see here that in Scripture, it's confirmed that if we do forgive, it affects us in a good way. Because by doing the right thing, our health shall spring forth speedily. So we have to be on guard against bitterness resentment, bearing a grudge, and these works of hatred and anger that keep us from being being able to forgive people because they do affect our health and our spirit. You have the testament of God for a witness. He was angered and bitter against his brother Joseph, and he got sick due to that. So hopefully that helps us understand what's happening here on earth and maybe happening to us as to why we may be facing some of the struggles we're facing. Forgiveness is very powerful in spirit. All right, continue, please. Then shalt thou call, and Ahia shall answer. Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here I am. These good words cause our prayers to be heard, so you can also see how harping on forgiveness in work and righteousness, Yache said in the prayer that we're commanded to pray, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. So in the way we forgive others, that's how Ahai is going to show himself toward us. And if we're happy to do the right thing, he'll be happy to hear us. All right, continue, please. If thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, the putting forth of the finger and speaking vanity, now, what does this mean? Can we go back into it and slow it down, please? No problem. If thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke. He said, in the midst, which is our hearts, remove the yoke of evil spirits from within. This takes self-examination. Okay. What else is he saying that we should stop doing? The putting forth of the finger. We stop pointing the finger at others and examining them because we are focused on getting the beam out of our own eyes to get the yoke off of us. All right, what else should we stop doing? And speaking vanity. We stop speaking lies. And we start speaking truth in our hearts to undo the yokes and grow from our shortcomings. This means to be honest with ourselves about the issues we are facing and finding solutions that we may grow from them. All right. Continue, please. 
And if thou draw out thy soul to the hungry, and satisfy the afflicted soul. This is loving your neighbor as yourself. Then shall thy light rise in obscurity, and thy darkness be as the noonday. The light of Christ will shine in us to remove the darkness from within, as Second Corinthians chapter 4 talks about. So we see how self-examination to take away the yoke, not being judgmental of others and focusing on ourselves by not pointing the finger so that we may grow and look at what we have going on. And then not speaking lies to ourselves, but speaking truth in our hearts to ensure that in our honesty, we're also finding solutions to overcome what we're dealing with. And then loving our neighbor as ourselves, doing these things is going to cause our light. Well, the light of Christ actually <laughs> to shine in us because it's his spirit that would do these things in us. All right. Continue, please. Ahaya shall guide thee continually and satisfy thy soul in drought. And make fat thy bones, and thou shalt be like a water garden, and like a spring of water whose waters fail not. The Spirit will be in us if we do these things. Continue, please. And they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Doing these good things will cause our children to inherit the kingdom of Christ. So this is also a life investment in their future. A heavenly trust fund of good works. Continue, please. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations, and thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of paths to dwell in. Our works will repair the breach of the covenant of our fathers and restore the paths of righteousness for our children to dwell in by our example. Thus far in the chapter, we saw the issue was that we were following our own pleasures to work on righteousness through hypocrisy and outward show. Then he explained what he actually has pleasure in so we could understand how to do his pleasure instead of our own pleasures and labors in unrighteous deeds. Hopefully this helps understand doing your own pleasure and exacting our own labors was in reference to sinning and working on righteousness, not literally just doing anything you have pleasure in, because everything we have pleasure in isn't a sin. This helps better understand how to keep the Sabbath. Can you go ahead to Isaiah 58 and 13, please? If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day. We have to turn away from doing our own pleasure of operating in the lust of the flesh in order to keep the Sabbath. And it's interesting with saying we have to refrain from operating in the lust of the flesh because even on the Sabbath day, it's unlawful to deal with your significant other. Yes, yes. Because although it's lawful, it's still considered a lust. It's a righteous lust, if you would say so. Right. right. Because right. you Cause bring you... forth children from it. But on the Sabbath day, it's not lawful. Interesting, seeing how it is. The Sabbath day is very spiritual. It's a day of connecting, connecting with people. A day of connecting with Elohim. So it's a day of connecting with creation on a spiritual level and not so much a physical level. Like, interesting. Thought I'd throw that out there. Thanks for pointing that out. In operating with that spiritual connection, that will cause us to do what I is asking us to do when we continue reading. And call the Sabbath a delight. You see the change of mindset I is requesting of us. To call the Sabbath a delight because the Sabbath wasn't always viewed as a delight. It was a struggle for folks in the past who weren't happy about doing no business or business prep on holy days. And as you can imagine, as Zach mentioned, how it's unlawful to deal with our significant other, where some folks view that as um, a restriction, like something bad, where they can't do the things they want to do on that day. And we can see in Amos chapter 8, verse 4 and 5, how people were resistant to the delight of the Sabbath. Please. Hear this. O ye that swallow up the needy, 
even to make the poor of the land to fail, saying, When will the new moon be gone, that we may sell corn, and the Sabbath, that we may set forth wheat, making the ephah small and the shekel great, and falsifying the balances by deceit? So you see, their struggle was they wanted the feast day to be gone so they could go ahead and do business and make money. And also get the Sabbath over it so we can go ahead and prepare to make money by getting all our business preparations together. So you see, that was a struggle why people didn't delight in the Sabbath. It takes a change of mind to view the Sabbath as delight, not doing business and enjoying the simplicity of it, enjoying the food allotted to us on this day instead of being grieved that we cannot cook, for example. Can you read Isaiah chapter 58, verse 13 again, please? Sure. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day. Change our works from within and keep the laws of the Sabbath. Continue. The holy of a higher honorable. And change our mindset towards the Sabbath to view it as holy of a higher and honorable. Continue. I shall honor him. How do we honor him? Not doing Tell us, own please. Ways, nor finding thy own pleasure, nor speaking thy own words. This is all in reference to our unrighteousness. It's simply saying, don't sin in our ways, which is our behavior and manner of life, nor in our pleasures, which is what we delight in, in our minds or actions, nor in our words, which is our speech that comes forth. If we don't sin in these things, then... So all of these things he's saying are the sinful nature of man. Those are the things we're supposed to abstain from in all these topics. It says in our, in our own ways, which is our manner of life, the things that we like to do that's sinful, we stay away from those, especially on the Sabbath day. Of course, we stay away from them, but on the Sabbath day, you really abstain from it. Nor in our pleasures or finding our own pleasures, we abstain from anything that we find pleasure in that's unrighteous on the Sabbath day specifically. That's what we're talking about. Uh, of course, this is, goes across the board. This is things that we have to grow and work on every day. Uh, nor speaking our own words. So we have to really guard our tongue this day about the way that we speak to one another, about the things that we say, especially on the Sabbath. And uh, I'm sure Brother Collins is going to get into why so that everybody can understand. Yes, for the broad picture for believers, this is an everyday thing for us in abstaining from the carnality of man because we are preparing for the kingdom to come. We know from the last lesson on the Sabbath that the Sabbath is really representing the kingdom of Christ to come. So it's an everyday thing for us in being diligent against the lust of the flesh. And with the Sabbath, that's the first day he actually sanctified after creation this day is more holier than all the days it's actually the day of the kingdom so on this day specifically it's of more importance to not defile it because the commandments as we're going to read when we get to barnabas we are literally commanded to keep it with pure hands and a pure heart if we're walking in a carnality or the natural lust of man we will not be able to keep it in a pure heart and with pure hands. Thus, it is not possible to keep Sabbath while walking in the lust of the flesh. And if we do not Hopefully sin in these things, then uh, Isaiah 50 and 14. <laughs> <laughs> then shalt thou delight thyself in a higher, and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth, and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father. For the mouth of Ahia has spoken it. This is about. This is what we're guaranteed. Doing the right thing will cause us to actually delight ourselves in Ahia. It started off in Isaiah like 58 and 2 where he said about we're seeking his ordinances. We're delighting in him. We're coming to approach to him. If we actually do the righteousness that he has pleasure in, then we're going to truly delight in him and he will delight in us. This is what comes from actually honoring our Father by doing His good works. Can you read Sirach chapter 3, verse 8, please? 
Honor thy father and mother both in word and deed. That a blessing may come upon thee from them. We want that blessing from on high. So may we be encouraged to do these things. So this is the correct understanding of the simplicity of how to make the Sabbath a delight. Not doing our own ways, nor finding our own pleasures, nor speaking our own words. As Zachua, I had gave him understanding of the simplicity of it to say, not walking in the carnality of man. Okay. The Lord revealed what it meant in simplicity here. So again, our pleasure is not literally just doing anything you have pleasure in, because everything we have pleasure in is in a sin. For example, I like playing card games like spades, board games, or watching shows about animals. None of these are against the law, so I'm not transgressing on the Sabbath to do these things. Let's review the Sabbath laws. Can you read Exodus chapter 23, verse 12, please? Exodus 23 and 12. Do you want to finish what you were saying? I was just saying, like, I like to play board game and card games in general. That's something I like to do, and it's not a transgression. So if I do it on the Sabbath, it's no sin. Now, in remembering the Sabbath, there's no buying or selling on the Sabbath. So I don't play card games for money or play board games for money on the Sabbath. There's no business dealings to do on that day to respect the holy day in all things, just for clarity, in case somebody felt they could go gamble on the Sabbath day or something like that. In the cards. And that was it. Okay. Uh, Exodus 23 and Exodus. 12. Yes, please. Six days thou shalt do thy work, and on the seventh day thou shalt rest. That thy ox and thine ass may rest, and the son of thy handmaid, and thy stranger may be refreshed. The day is a day of rest from business, jobs, and working to get refreshed. So it's not lawful for me to go get exercise on this day. Can you read the definition of rest? H7673, please. Uh, Shabbatah, a primitive route to repose, that is, desist from exertion. Hopefully this helps understand. Continue, please. All right. So that's where you wouldn't get into anything that had to do with exercise or anything on the Sabbath because it's exertion. Right. Used in many implied relations, causatively, figuratively, or specifically, cause to, let, make to, or cease. We cease from our jobs and physical labor. All right. Uh, celebrate. This is how we actually celebrate the feast. And ceasing from our labors on the Sabbath day is the simplicity of what separates the Sabbath as holy from the other days of the week wherein work may be done. All right. Cause make to fail, keep Sabbath, suffer to be lacking, leave, put away, or put down, make to, rest, rid, steal, take away. So you see how we leave stuff to be lacking. We put down, like, well, I'm not grabbing my shovel to go work on the yard, you know, things like that. It's a day of relaxing. <laughs> it's a day of rest, and it's also a festival day. So having fun isn't against the law of the Sabbath. Can you read Jubilees chapter 50, verse 9, please? You shall do no work, whatever on the Sabbath day. Say what you have prepared for yourself on the sixth day, so as to eat and drink and rest. So the only work we do is pertaining to eating food that we've already prepared the day before so that we can rest. Right. And keep Sabbath Continue from all work on that day. Avoiding our jobs, laboring, and business, such as you can find they were doing, they were being told to do in Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 21 through 24, and Nehemiah chapter 13, verse 15 to 17. It's lawful to heal on the Sabbath, as Matthew chapter 12, verse 10 to 12 showed, of course. Continue, please. And to bless Ahaya, your Alahayim. It's a day to give praise. So music is a part of the Sabbath. Dance, if you like to bless in those ways. Continue, please. And to bless Ahaya, your Alahayim, who hath given you a day of festival and a holy day, and a day of the holy kingdom for all Israel, is this day among their days forever. You see, this day is a day of the holy kingdom. 
this is why this day is so important and there's more emphasis on this day not to defile it all right now there's no law against having fun it's a day of the kingdom and there will be joy there on the sabbath singing dancing and playing is lawful the kids will get to know ahaya gave them a day to have fun too in his honor on our days of rest we can still go places since it's about resting from labor and business and exercise we can take walks and look at matthew 12 and 1 please at that time yashay went on the sabbath day through the corn and his disciples were hungry and began to pluck the ears of corn and to eat all right notice they went walking through the corn they didn't go for a jog okay we can go to church matthew 12 and 9 and when he was departed thence he went into their synagogue all right or to a nice area or place to chill and relax can you read matthew chapter 13 verse 1 the same day when yachi out of the house and sat by the seaside so we can go outside and go sit down by the water if we like even we can go up in a mountain if that's comforting just don't go hiking for exercise can you read mark 3 verse 13 14 and 19. okay and he goeth up into a mountain and calleth unto him whom he would and they came unto him and he ordained 12 that they should be with him and that he might send them forth to preach uh, mark 3 and 19. And Judas Iscariot, which also betrayed him, and they went into a house. So we see we can also go by folks' houses, or they can come to ours to hang out. Mark chapter 3, verse 20. And the multitude cometh together again, so that they could not so much as eat bread. Or we can even go by people's house, so they come by ours to eat a meal. There was no trespass in doing these things because the law of the Sabbath doesn't restrict us to sit still in one place. We just can't take journeys in regards to business or travel by ship or by trap. I'm sorry, I said that wrong. We just can't take journeys in regards to business, nor can we travel by ship on the sea. Can you read Jubilees chapter 50, verse 8, please? Or whoever says he would do something on it, that he will set out on a journey thereon in regard to any buying or selling. All right. All right. Can you read Jubilee chapter 50, verse 12? And every man who does any work thereon or goes on a journey. We know from verse 8 the journeys in regard to business are unlawful. Continue, please. All who rides on any beast. That's because the beast also ought to rest. But our cars and bikes are not animals. We just have to fuel up beforehand and prep the bike beforehand on the day before the Sabbath. Continue, please. Or travels by ship on the sea. Getting into our car or on a bike to go chill at the park, lake, or beach isn't against the law because we are not traveling by sea. As we saw, Christ went to nice areas on the Sabbath, and he just sat in the boat. He didn't travel until after the Sabbath. It's just unlawful to be exercising since it's a day of rest. Of course, if you want to go in the lake or in the beach water, it's not a trespass if we aren't swimming because we're still relaxing. It's just in water. The kids can play in the shallow water and have fun. Hopefully, this helps simplify things on the Sabbath. We covered everything else in keeping the Sabbath holy in the video, I believe. We just have to avoid doing the things that are unseemly. Can you read Jubilees chapter 2, verse 29, please? Can, we, can I uh, touch on something on traveling by ships on the sea real quick? Sure. I want to see if this is a fair assessment. One of the reasons why you couldn't travel by ship on the sea is because you had to work that boat. You had to work the sails, the oar. Um, it's, it's work. Like somebody's going to yes, be working sir. for you to ride on that ship. True. Is that the same as a aircraft? An airplane is a vehicle because they're literally would, driving it. I would think more so like a personal aircraft. It's like a vehicle, not a commercial. Right. 
right? Because commercial, you have everybody that has all those different parts that play into setting up the flight and getting the flight going. And all the jobs they have to work. Working. Right. They have no work to do that. So good clarity. Your personal airplane, that's just like getting in a ride. But commercial catching flights they you got the baggage guy the fuel guy right. person at the desk trying to schedule everything coordinate you know as opposed to your personal plane if you had your own landing strip and everything it'd be different or like a personal pleasure yeah all right uh, a good, i do believe good, good subject there i, I wanted right. to just clarify that uh jubilee 2 and 29 Declare and say to the children of Israel, the law of this day, both that they should keep Sabbath thereon, and that they should not forsake it in the error of their hearts, and that it is not lawful to do any work thereon which is unseemly, to do their own pleasure. The first and simple law of the Sabbath is not to do any work that's unseemly. And the angel explained the unseemly works. Uh, doing our own pleasure. Sorry, the unseemly works that are unlawful on the Sabbath is referring to sinning because he said to do thereon our own pleasure. And our pleasure is referring to sinning as Isaiah 58 showed. Can you read the definition of unseemly, please? Yes. Of behavior or actions, not proper or appropriate. So by definition, the things that are not proper or appropriate on the Sabbath are things that cause us to transgress the law and the fruits of the Spirit, because that is what would defile our hands and make our hearts impure. Can you read Barnabas chapter 15, verse 1, please? Moreover, concerning the Sabbath, likewise, it is written in the ten words, in which he spake to Moses face to face on Mount Sinai. And ye shall hallow the Sabbath of Ahiah with pure hands and with a pure heart. This is the simplicity of hallowing the Sabbath. In order to have pure hands and pure heart, we have to stop transgressing the laws and performing the lust of the flesh. Because these things defile us from the heart. Can you read Mark chapter 7, verse 20 to 23, please? Sure. Then he said, that which cometh out of the man that defileth the man. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. A pure heart and clean hand is essential to ascend to Zion. Can you read Isaiah chapter 33, verse 14 to 17, please? The sinners of Zion are afraid. Fearfulness hath surprised the hypocrites. Who among us shall dwell with the devouring fire? Who among us shall dwell with everlasting burnings? He that walketh righteously and speaketh uprightly, he that despiseth the gain of oppressions, that shaketh his hands, from holding of bribes, that stoppeth his ears from hearing of blood, and shutteth his eyes from seeing evil. Okay. He shall dwell on high, his place of defense shall be the munitions of rocks, bread shall be given him, his water shall be sure. Thine eyes shall see the king in his beauty, they shall behold the land that is very afar off. You notice a person that works these good works, they're going to see the kingdom. They're going to see the land of promise. David also confirms these types of good works is what is required for us to ascend. Can you read Psalms 24, verse 3 and 4, please? Who shall ascend into the hill of Ahiah? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. Hopefully this helps understand why we are preparing as we are for the kingdom by giving such reverence to the Sabbath day and reverence in our everyday walks. 
The Sabbath is the day of the kingdom, and the, what we're commanded to walk in on the Sabbath in a pure hand and a pure heart is all preparing us to be worthy to dwell with the holy ones. All right. Can you read Second Corinthians chapter seven, verse one, please? Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of Elohim. Chasing that perfection by cleansing from the uncleanness of the flesh and spirit is our goal to make it to the holy hill and especially being on God to do so on the Sabbath. As Zach talked about coming out of the carnality of man or the natural man, we becoming spiritual people by taking heed and observing the Sabbath in the right way and observing the righteousness of Allah in our everyday walks. The fruits of the spirit and keeping of the commandments are what we must work to, and do through faith in the name Yaching to be of pure hands and pure heart. Our heart is the focus of the Sabbath to guard it against error. On the Sabbath, we can do and talk about things. We just have to avoid sinning, play family games, cards, and etc. We can talk about casual topics. Every conversation doesn't have to be biblical. It just can't be unrighteous or in the spirit of lust of the flesh, as is unseemly for a believer. Nor can we say we plan to go on a journey for business on the Sabbath because it's against the law. We can talk about our jobs or buying or selling on the Sabbath. We just can't plan to do our jobs or, or actually do our jobs on the Sabbath unless it's in the health field because it's lawful to heal, as we discussed in the last lesson on the Sabbath. We can watch clean movies, shows, not beholding evil to profane the Holy One, because in singleness, we shun seeing evil, lest we be corrupted seeing the transgressions. Can you read Testament of Issachar chapter 4, verse 6, please? But he walketh in singleness of soul, and beholdeth all things in a rightness of heart. Shunning eyes made evil through the error of the world, lest he should see the perversion of any of the commandments of Ahia. We also abstain from all appearance of evil. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 22. Abstain from all appearance of evil. All right. So watching sports on the Sabbath isn't a sin, but we don't want to see the perversion of the commandment. So we don't condone watching live sporting events on the Sabbath for the reasons that these are paid athletes and other workers who are profaning the Sabbath by working for our entertainment purposes on the holy day. The Sabbath is a feast day and a day of rejoicing, wherein we do no actual work whether via communications or labor. Now understanding, we simply have to avoid sinning to honor Ahaya and keep his Sabbath. Know that our liberty in Christ isn't to go sin. Can you read Galatians chapter 5, verse 13 and 14, please? Well, brother, you have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. Continue, please. For all the laws fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. This is what we're called on to. One of the two greatest commandments. Hopefully this edification is helpful in understanding the simplicity of the Sabbath and also in helping focus in our growth. All right. Uh, anything else, Zachary? No, I think that was good. I'm pleased. If you have any questions, please write them in the chat. Brother Kata, you didn't have anything else you wanted to touch on, did you? But I did think about situational. Like, as far as what? And say, on the Sabbath, someone I know, two scenarios. One, they're going to some kind of party that, you know, something unrighteous. That's, and then another, they're on the way. They're trying to go to congregate at the church or with at someone's house and their car breaks down when wisdom in both scenarios how should one handle that on the sabbath day uh i mean it's 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 one of two things um either it's 
either it's work or it's like getting your ox, and ox out of a ditch. Which on the Sabbath day, your ox is supposed to be resting. But if it falls into a ditch while it's walking around, you literally get it out on the Sabbath, correct? Yeah. Which requires work. You don't leave it there stranded. Right? You don't leave it stranded. Okay. I mean, you can't buy or sell on the Sabbath, but if if you need to help somebody, I mean, you can push it out of the road. Uh, right. If it's something you don't want that can, to get hurt. can easily be fixed, you can just fix it. But to help and to I thought about it because to help and being single, you know, of heart, should a person look at well, where were you going to decide whether they would help them or just help them for helping them sake? Uh, you're going into a whole other topic now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. So, well, we we'll save it for another time. Right. We we'll say we're building. We're building one step at a time. Right. One step at a time. <laughs> because if right. that uh, was the case, look, if that was the case, it wouldn't have broke down, and they were doing right. So, <laughs> just... uh, <laughs> right, so, right. So you, just... you know who stopped them. Right. You know who stopped the car. <laughs> save them. <laughs> You let them uh, know, like, I think you need to come on home, baby. <laughs> right. Home. Um, um, do you have a question for Baba Kuya? Yeah. He said, uh, family, if you, if, if you cook something before the Sabbath and it needs to be warmed up on the Sabbath, correct? I'm sure that's what you're asking. Um, what do you do? You don't profane the Sabbath. There, right. Any food that's made before the Sabbath, it can survive. So unless it's curry, curry will give you some trouble. We've learned our lesson. Don't mess with curry unless you're going to eat it while it's hot. But we don't warm anything up on the Sabbath because that would profane it. To be honest, Brother Babakuya, we're in a generation where the possibilities are endless. If you cook something before the Sabbath on the sixth day, there are things that you can literally keep your food in that don't require cooking. It literally just keeps the heat contained for your food to be in there you're not cooking it's the heat from the food after you cooked it that's literally just keeping it warm over a longer period of time and you can go and, and, and eat your food right out of that without Amen. profaning the sabbath by putting it in the microwave on the sabbath day because that's cooking Amen. true right. true you can do that so for your tea too to, right look into some of these things even the flask the flask does the same thing for, for drinks, if you got something hot, put it in a flask, it's going to stay warm 24 hours, you know. So, I mean, the food is the same way. There's no no transgression in that. The microwave is a cooking instrument. Yes, it cooks the food. Yeah. So, when I, I said bake what you would bake and seed what you would seed and then lay it up for the Sabbath. So we literally have to lay it up. And as Zachwa gave the wisdom, you can lay it up in an insulator, something that uh, insulator. keeps the heat. Yes. Like, so it like, lasts. Like, like, look at like Papa John, like the pizza places. They have mm -hmm. those insulators. They're not cooking any food, but they're allowing the food to stay warm for 30 minutes just so you can get it hot. And it, it's hot when you get it. So that insulator is working. You know what I mean? So. Yes. You're welcome, brother. Yes, I, yeah. All right. Uh, please feel free to send us an email at hebrewreaders at gmail.com if anybody has any questions, any other questions that you didn't want to post on here publicly. Um, we'll definitely get to it in a private manner. We thank you all, and uh, may a high blessing keep you all throughout the week. All right. Thank you for gathering with Hebrew Readers Church. You got anything else, Brother Casa? Peace be with you. All right, family. That's it. <laughs> Shout out to Charlie. <laughs>